Hello friends, welcome to this 7th video on the series of group theory. This video will cover about the concept of cyclic groups. We will see what is meant by a cyclic group, what is meant by a generator and a few properties that deals with a cyclic group and a problem to explain about cyclic group. Come on, let's get into the video. Definition cyclic group. A group G star is said to be cyclic if there exists an element A belonging to the group such that every element X of my G can be expressed as the format X equals A power N for some integer N. Over here, what we mean by A power N is a is going to be binary operated how many number of times? n number of times. That is the meaning of a power n. So, if I am going to binary operate this a n number of times and this n keeps on varying, what happens is I will be able to generate or create every element of G. So, this quantity A which is going to generate the elements of the group G will now be referred by the name generator. A cyclic group is said to be generated by A or A is the generator of G and we denote it within curly braces. So, we refer A is the generator, generator of the set. And we keep in mind every element of my G will be created, will be created or you can write it of the format A to some power n. This is not our usual power n. So, this power n, A power n is going to be n times the binary operation done or defined on your G. So, this is going to be for some integer n. Now, come on, let us see what is going to be an example that will define this cyclic group in a better way. Let us consider the example of the unity of the group G which consists of fourth roots of unity. So, the fourth roots of unity are 1, minus 1, i and minus i. I clearly know that G star is going to be a group. We will now show that it is going to be a cyclic group. So, what do you mean by a cyclic group? There exists an element, an element that is going to generate all the elements of my G. So, what are the elements that G contain? 1 minus 1 i minus i. Now take the element called as i. When I raise this i and let g with respect to the usual multiplication, the complex number multiplication be the binary operation. So i, when I raise it to the power 1, I have i. So what happens? This element over here in my g gets generated. When I take i to the power of 2, so this is i binary operated with i, that is i product i. What is i square? i square makes it as minus 1. So what happens now? This element gets generated. Now let me go for i cube. What is i cube? i into i into i. This i into i is my i square which is minus 1 and with it 
I do the binary operation or the product with I. So this gives me minus I in which case the next element also gets generated. And lastly we have I to the power of 4 will be equal to I how many times I I I this is your I square and this is your I square. Now what is my I square? I square is minus 1. So it is minus 1 into minus 1 that gives me the value as 1. So what has generated now? The last element of G has also been generated. So we notice that this one single element called as I when I raise it to n varying as 1, 2, 3, 4 generates all my elements of G. Therefore, I call this quantity called as I to be the generator, generator of the set or the group G with respect to the binary operation of multiplication. Now we can notice one more thing over here. The element minus i also has the same property. That is minus i also acts as a generator. How come? Let us see. Minus i to the power of 1 makes it as minus i. What is minus i? The whole square. So it is minus i into minus i. So it is minus into minus plus i square. What is plus i square? i square is minus 1. So in your g which has 1 minus 1 i minus i. The first element minus i was generated. The next element minus 1 is generated. Now let me raise minus i the whole cube. So it is minus i minus i minus i. What is this minus i into minus i? It is minus i the whole square. So that makes it minus 1. So this is minus i into minus 1. Minus into minus makes it as plus. So you have plus i into 1 makes it i. So the third element gets generated. Now what happens with minus i the whole to the power of 4? So that is going to be minus i the whole square into minus i the whole square. We know minus i the whole square is minus 1. So it is minus 1 into minus 1. So that makes it as plus 1 generating the last number also. Hence, we see that whenever i is going to be a generator, this inverse element which is minus i also can generate the entire elements of your g. So, it is not necessary that you will have only one single element to be a generator. There can also be more than one generator for the same group. Now, we will look into the property that says that if a group has A to be its generator, then minus A, the inverse element of the A, will also be a generator. So, that's why when we had I to be the generator, the inverse element of I, which is minus I, also became the generator of the group. So, now having come this way, we will complete the proof for this theorem. We suppose that B belongs to G and if B belongs to G, which is going to be a cyclic group, then what happens? I can write this B to be the generator to some power called as M. So, when I do the binary operation M number of times, I will be generating the element called as B. So, this M is going to be an integer. But again in the same case, I can also write this a b as a power minus 1 to the power of minus m where minus m is also going to be an integer. In which case, I will be having minus of minus which is going to be m. So, what does this say? If a is going to be a generator, this element over here which is going to also be rising it to some power going to give me b will also be a generator. So, a inverse will also be a generator of your g star. That's why we say 
whenever a is a generator a inverse is also a generator we will see one more property of the cyclic group which says that a cyclic group is going to be abelian what do we mean by abelian abelian is nothing but commutative group what do you mean by commutative my a star b is the same as b star a for me in this abelian group group as such satisfies closure associative identity and inverse if in addition you have commutativity also then you call the group to be abelian in nature what the theorem says is whenever your group is going to be cyclic then it will be also abelian in nature now let us assume that g is going to be a cyclic group which is going to have a as its generator now let us take two elements b and c that belongs to this cyclic group since it is a cyclic group what happens any element here must be generated by a so let me write b to be equal to a power m and any element c must also be generated by a because a is the generator of the element so let me name this as n where m and n are going to be some integers for me now let me do the binary operation of b star c now this gives me a power m binary operation with a to the power of n which means a a a how many times i do the binary operation m times i do and again continued by it n n n how many times i do again this a a a a n number of times i do okay so the binary operation for the first is carried out for m times and the same binary operation is carried out again for how many number of times n number of times so what you will be having is a has been carried out how many number of times totally here m here n so it will be have carried out m plus n number of times but this is the same as writing it as n plus m so again i can split it back and write it as a power n into a power m and now what happens over here i know a power n can be replaced as c and a power m can be replaced as b where did we start we started with b star c where did we end we ended with c star b so if on flipping the law remains the same then you call it to be commutative in nature now on flipping b star c we have it to be the same as c star b therefore it is going to be commutative in nature so if it is commutative what do we declare it as we declare it as abelian the thing which we need to keep in mind over here is if it is going to be cyclic then obviously it implies that it is going to be abelian in nature but the converse of the above statement need not be true what do we mean by this that is if it is going to be abelian it need not imply to us that it is going to be cyclic in nature so this need not have to do we have seen so many problems which are going to be abelian in our last videos but do they have some element which is going to be generator and that generates the entire group no right so it is not necessary that when it is abelian it has to be cyclic but whenever it is going to be cyclic automatically abelian is going to be an inbuilt nature of that quantity so i now suppose the group concept of cyclic group and the two properties related with it on the example was clear enough to explain the concept of the cyclic groups happy learning keep learning